chance has made my dreams come true. And I have given him what he desires most in return. And what's that? Every piece of me. He's a very demanding man, isn't he? Must be quite a challenge to be with him. Yes. Maybe he is the most demanding man. Phantom Thread, directed and produced by Paul Thomas Anderson, was released in December of 2017 and was nominated for Best Picture, Best Director, Best Leading Actor, Supporting Actress, Costume Design, and Best Original Score. First scene the film opens with an eerie tone, as we see a woman, later identified as Alma, and a man behind the frame discussing the demands of an individual named Reynolds Woodcock. The mood is dark and the context of the scene is unknown, as it is presented non-linearly, as the scene is actually one of the last scenes in the film. The sense of eeriness is also supported in Greenwood's composition, as the chords of this piece have great dissonance and do not settle well with the audience. The name of the opening piece is called Belotus Felius, a poisonous fungi Alma uses to intoxicate Reynolds. When Alma states that she's given every piece of herself to Reynolds, every piece of me, his late motif is cued, and the audience begins to hear the He's House of Woodcock man, theme. Isn't he? The piece entitled House of Woodcock does not only represent Reynolds Woodcock but it also represents his lifestyle, his job, and his sister, Zero. It is only the second scene of the film, and we are already a witness to Reynolds' articulate character and compulsive tendencies, where everything needs to be done the way he pleases. These characteristics can be heard echoed in the orchestra. The music is ballet-like, romantic, and proper, like Mr. Woodcock himself. Set in 1950s London, Phantom Thread follows Daniel Day-Lewis as Reynolds Woodcock, a fashion designer who makes elegant gowns for high society ladies. He's a controlling man whose unpleasant demeanor pales in comparison to that of his sister Cyril. Order is all Reynolds truly cares for. It allows him to make his art in an environment that is unchanging day and out. Reynolds tends to bring other women into his life as muses, only to excommunicate them when they begin to show signs of neediness. This all changes when he takes on the headstrong Alma as his new lover. Her inability to happily settle into the background of his life threatens to tear the regimented House of Woodcock like down. <clears throat> A Welsh rabbit? With a poached steak on top, please. Not too runny. And bacon. Scones. Butter. Cream. Show me. Will you remember? Yes. dinner with me. Yes. For the hungry boy, my name is Alma. This is heard, but largely felt in the scenes without any underscoring, where the audience hears the pure sounds of the scene. The dining scenes, of which there are many, carry the most tension and generally lack any sound tracking whatsoever. 
The sound design in Phantom Thread is nearly as central as the music. There are a total of 16 scenes where there is no diegetic or non-diegetic music present. Most of these scenes also tend to be dining scenes, where the sound of cutlery or conversation specifically irritates Reynolds. Alma tends to prod and irritate his fastidious hypersensitivity. During one scene at the breakfast table, the sound of Alma scraping a knife across her toast is so obscenely vivid in the sound design that it becomes clear we are hearing it from Reynolds' perspective. Please don't move so much, Alma. It's a distraction. It's very distracting. It's hard to ignore. It's as if you just rode a horse across the room. This is too much movement. It's entirely too much movement at breakfast. In another scene, we are watching Alma try on a party dress made of blue floral brocade and looks at it with disapproval when Reynolds asks what is wrong. As Alma continues to badmouth the dress, the instrumentation that plods along with her words reaches an emotional high before Reynolds puts an end to it by shouting out a firm and declarative stop. What are you looking so forlorn about? Huh? I don't know. I, I think I don't like the fabric so much. Well, Alma, this fabric is adored by the women who wear our design. It's perfect for this dress. Cyril is right. Cyril is always right. Maybe one day you'll change your taste, Alma. Maybe not. Maybe you have no taste. Maybe I like my own taste. It's just enough to get you into trouble. Perhaps I'm looking for trouble. Stop! Before you can spend too much time focusing in on her dismay, the orchestra picks right back up again, a viola's pizzicato smoothing over the bickering before anyone can make too much of it, as if to reassure you, the audience, that Reynolds' word is final. Everything else is an interruption. Not all the music in Phantom Thread is Greenwood's. The adapted music in the film includes Oscar Peterson's My Ship, as well as My Foolish Heart. Good morning, Countess. Good morning, Sarah. There are snippets of the second movement of Debussy's string quartet, full of spiky pizzicato figures. There are also voicings in the soundtrack that remind one of Bill Evans at his most fragile, instrumental color that brings to mind the ballet russes, an airy chromaticism a la Miles Davis circa Nefertiti. The most notable of the underscoring woven through the scenes is one of a New Year's party, where the audience can hear both the diegetic music of Adlon Sin and the non-diegetic piece entitled Alma. Interestingly enough, this is the only scene in the film where we hear Alma's leitmotif played as a disoriented Reynolds stumbles through the crowd, searching for his wife. The way in which the overlapping underscoring and diegetic music is very powerful, as it lets us hear the disconnect between the emotions of Woodcock and everyone else.
When the film takes a Hitchcockian turn involving poisonous mushrooms, we expect the score to gesture Hitchcock's composer Bernard Herrmann. But Greenwood stays true to the musical language for which he and Anderson have been evolving for years. The sweeping romanticism of huge string sections, smaller motifs that rotate inside the strings like glittering cogs, and a chorus resonating feedback that sometimes creeps up behind the orchestra. Versions of which Greenwood used to accompany the effects of different drugs in another movie he composed the score for entitled Inherent Vice. The mushroom toxin seeping into Woodcock's bloodstream could be heard in these thin, acidic striations of feedback. The music in Phantom Thread gives us access to interior processes, both physiological and biological, that a camera could never capture. It's not very good, is it? It's ugly. The collective intensity of the seamstresses working day and night on a dress occurs in a musical atmosphere that turns the tension of a deadline into its own kind of cold beauty. Yes, I'll deal with that in a minute, Biddy. Thank you. When Woodcock is apparently on the brink of death, his vision of his mother, the film's one actual phantom, is inhabited by that eerie upper register in the strings, as if the sound were assessing something supernatural. Other than the House of Woodcock theme, the most reoccurring piece in the movie, there are two other main themes entitled Phantom Thread and Sandalwood. These themes are associated with the relationship between Reynolds and Alma. As attention on screen grows, the dissonance of each theme expands. Phantom Thread has four different versions and Sandalwood has two. You can hear them in these following clips.
try and pull this back for you. The movie centers on an unspoken tension between two people, a couple unable to always communicate. And so, the music says what the characters can't. As Greenwood discussed in an interview, instruments correspond to feelings, which the characters often have a tough time expressing themselves. Like in the scene in which Reynolds' dead mother appears, the music becomes shriller, as if the viola player's strain is mirroring the characters. That was written around the sound of the viola playing in its highest register. And there's just something about the sound of the viola hitting those high notes, he says. You can hear the player, who's amazing, struggling slightly. And that's a really nice human emotion to hear in music. Phantom Thread's score, as a whole, feels like another main character or storytelling voice in the film. Greenwood's abilities have never served one of Anderson's films better or proved so integral to its power. <laughs> 